Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 2, Lesson 9, Solving Problems About Proportional Relationship. Okay, so what do you know? Consider the problem. A person is running a distance race at a constant rate. What time will they finish the race? It will first ask us what information you need to know to be able to solve that problem. And so there's lots of things you might need to know in order to figure that out. Perhaps things like how long is the race or how far or what the distance is going to be. I don't know, but you probably need to know that idea. It might be helpful to know the rate that they run. How fast are they running this race? Are they a slow runner or a fast runner? I don't know. If we're going to figure out what time they're going to finish the race, do they mean like time as in like clock time? Like like 9 o'clock? Is that what they're asking? If that's the case, then what time is it now? Or what time does it start? Because that's going to determine whether they finish at lunchtime or dinner time. Um, that type of thing there. So there's lots of questions you'd have to ask to be able to figure things out. What you did today in class, and if you missed this, it's hard to make it up on a video, sorry about that, is your teacher gave you some cards. You either had a, coming into the zoom here, you either had a problem card or you had a data card. The problem card gave you a question that you're trying to solve. The problem with that problem card was the information you needed was not there. A little bit like we just said, the distance in the race, how long did they finish, whatever, it's not there. So the data card had all the information. So with a partner, the idea was to have a conversation back and forth to talk about, uh, to solve the problem using that person's information. Now the key thing here is this. So if you're in class doing this today, you're watching because teacher's not there, that's cool. You, what you want to do if you're the problem person, you're going to read your card and think about what information you need to answer the question. You need to ask your partner for specific information, like how far is, or how long is the race, what time is it, things like that. You have to think about what you're going to need to solve your problem. Okay. As you get that, explain to your partner how that information is going to help you solve it and then you can solve it and explain your reasoning to your partner. If you're the person with the data, okay, you look at all that data there, but ask your partner what specific information you need. Don't just give them more than they ask for. Only give them the things they ask for. Only give them that, not extra stuff. Don't figure it out for your partner. Make the problem card partner figure it out. Make them do the work. So before you tell them the, the number, let's say they want to know what time does the race start, ask them. Why do you need to know that information? Make them help, make them talk through their thinking. Why do you need that information there? After they solve it, then go ahead and listen to the reasoning and figure that out. So I'm going to let you, if you're watching this on your own, you can pause and work on that with your class and then come back and we'll do the next part here. Okay. The next activity, 9.3, moderating comments here, is an optional one, but you might have done it, maybe not, hard to say. A company is hiring people to read through all the comments posted on their website to make sure they are appropriate. Four people applied for the job and were given one day to show how quickly they could check comments. So let's see what's going on here. We have all these people working. This guy goes, does, does 210 minutes and checks 50,000 comments. This person is 200 minutes and they check that many comments every five minutes. This person has a rate at which they're doing it and they do it for 120 minutes. This person has another rate for 150 minutes. We want to order the people from greatest to least in terms of total number of comments checked. So we're doing comments checked there. And then we'll order the people from greatest to least in terms of how fast, their speed, their time. So we're going to rank them by comments and then rank them by speed. Let's take a look at the first guy. And the first guy did a total of 50,000 comments. Now that's pretty easy there. So we know his comment rate was 50,000. Okay. Let's maybe put this in a chart here. So comments, comments, and then we can say, here's the time. And then we're going to have our rate for what that's going to be. So for our first guy, person number one, two, three, four, two, three, four. There we go. Should have made more space there. The first person goes 210 minutes and they get 50,000 comments. Okay? Person two works for 200 minutes. Now, they're able to check 
1,325 comments every five minutes. Well, how many five minutes are there in 200? You have to do 200 divided by five, and 200 divided by five is going to be 40, okay? Which means they're checking comments every 40 minutes, but every 40 minutes they can read 1,325, so for 40 times they check them, they can read that many comments. So 1,325 times 40 gives you 53,000. So this guy does 53,000 comments. Person number two, we have them working 120 minutes, and we plug that into how many comments they do, 120 times 331, right? Nope, other way around, yeah. Yeah, 331 times 120, that's gonna get you 39,720. So 39,720. And then finally over here, this guy works 150, we plug that into our time, okay? And when we do our 150 guy, we find this person is gonna be doing 150 minutes, they're gonna be doing uh, 40,000. Okay? Now, to, turn, to determine their rate, we're gonna take the Y value and divide it by the X value. So let's first of all look at number one, sorry. Order the people from the number of comments checked, greatest to least. So our greatest is person two with 53,000. Next is person one with 50,000. Next is person four. And then finally is person three. In terms of how fast they check those things, right? So here's one, two, three, four. Person one is doing 50,000 every 210 minutes. Person two is 53,000 every 200 minutes. Person three is 39,720 every 120, and person four is 40,000 every 150. When you divide those out, what you come up with is something like this. This person's doing 238 comments per minute. This one's doing 265 comments per minute. Then we have 331 comments per minute and 266 comments per minute. So in terms of Putting them from greatest to least for how fast, we would say we would go three, four, and then two, and then one. So a few steps there to make that work, but that's gonna be numbers one and two. So looking at your summary for today's lesson, we're just really talking about things that have a constant rate. Constant rates is how we decide if there's gonna be a relationship between different quantities, is they have to have a constant rate that connects those two things together. Whether that's a bird flying at a constant speed and looking at the, the relation between time and distance. Whether it's filling a bathtub and looking at the relationship between the amount of water in the tub and the time it takes that. There's gonna be some sort of relationship there. And ultimately, what's gonna happen is there should be, there should be, some sort of relationship that you can write down in the form of y equals a constant proportionality times an x value there. Okay, again, we're gonna move on to the homework, so it's good for you to press pause here and start your homework, and then press play when you're ready to check and see how you did. All right, so the homework for tonight looks like this. It says explain whether they think the relationship is proportional or not and explain your reasoning. Okay, we have the weight of a stack of standard A and F copy paper versus the number of sheets of paper. So the weight of paper versus the number of sheets of paper. Is the relationship there? Well, if we were talking about the total weight of the paper, right? So the weight of the paper, the stacks, so the weight of the stack, is that equal to some constant proportionality times the number of sheets of paper? To determine this, we have to decide the paper weight is constant. Is the paper weight gonna change? If it's just standard paper, we could probably say, if it's just regular paper, they should all weigh the same amount, ideally. It may not be perfect, but we'd probably say in this case, yes, it's gonna be proportional because the paper weighs the same and all that's changing is a number of sheets of paper. If I said the paper weighed five grams, which it doesn't, I'd multiply that by how many sheets of paper I had, 
and that would tell you my total weight. And I could do that again and again. This stays the same. What changes the number of sheets of paper that I'm weighing. When I look at B, it says the weight, again, idea, of a stack of books of different, different size books versus the number of books in the stack. So the number of books would be here, and I'm not talking about that constant. Can I have a constant proportionality if I'm talking about different size books? No, you just can't do it. It's not going to work because every time I put a book on there, it changes the size. Different books are not going to be constant, so there's no K value. So that's going to make it not proportional. Let's look at number two. It says every package of a certain toy also includes two batteries, right? So here's my package of a toy, and inside of it it's going to be a battery and a battery. Awesome. Are the number of toys and the number of batteries in a proportional relationship? Hmm. Well, is there a relationship toy to battery? If you were to make a chart, could you say toy, battery, and could you make a chart that said one toy, two batteries? Hmm, do we know how many, if there's two toys, what you'd have? Yeah, everybody gets two. Okay, so two times two is what? Four. Do you have a proportional relationship? Are there X and our Y? Can we have two over one is equal to two? Is four over two is equal to the same? It sure does. So we have a K value there. There is a proportional relationship between toys and batteries. Sometimes it's just helpful to kind of make your table and see does it work or not? So in this case for A, we would say yes, there is a proportional relationship. And the two constants of proportionality, two constants? Sure. We know that for sure two is one of them, looking at my table there. But as always, there is the reciprocal. So I'm going to write down two and the reciprocal, which is what? One over two. So there are two of them. Depends on how you set up your equation right so for choice for uh, letter b it says use t for the number of toys and b for the number of batteries to write two equations all right sure so we have toys and batteries okay so we want to write this out so batteries is here that's like my y and a y is equal to we said k x so my batteries is going to be equal to my k value which in this case was two times my toys, which is T. And to do the other way around, the toy is equal to the reciprocal, one half, times the battery, okay? All right, next question. It says, Lynn and her brother were born on the same date in different years. Lynn is five years older, was five years older when her brother was two, okay? We have a chart here that shows their ages as they age and get on, get older, okay? So we begin with Lynn's age is five, brother's age is two, and I fill in the table. When she becomes six, how old is he gonna be? Well, it's just adding one, so we would say three. When she is 15, that's adding nine years, he's gonna be 12, okay? When he becomes that amount, we're adding 13 years. We add 13 to here as well that becomes 28. Okay, is there a proportional relationship between the ages? Hmm, two to five, three to six, which is equal to a half. I don't see a proportional relationship there, right? There's not a proportional relationship. What's happening is they're each increasing by one year, every year, because that's how age works. And so the ratio changes again and again. Again, you should explain this in your own words, but the ratio is changing. There's not a proportional relationship. We can't say that there's a constant rate by which they are changing. They're all growing one year at a time, but the distance between their ages stays the same. It's not a proportion though. It doesn't work that way. For number four, a student argues that Y equals X over nine does not represent a proportional relationship between X and Y because we need to multiply one variable by the same constant to get one and not divide. Well, do you agree or disagree? Hopefully by now you're looking at this and saying, well, hmm, I know I can do y equals kx, but what else can we do? We've said that if k is a fraction, if k is 1 over k like this, if k is like that, then you would write it as y equals x over k. Right? 
yeah so does this equation here match this equation there it sure does which tells us that it's a proportional relationship the problem the other students having is they're caught up on it has to multiply has to multiply yes and no but when you multiply by a fraction that's the same as dividing by that same number okay those are the same things happening just a different way of, of showing it okay so for y equals x over 9 that can also be written as y equals 1 9th times x there's the multiplying part that the student wanted to see it looks like that if you want to multiply it but that can be rewritten as x divided by 9 and it's the same thing so do we agree or disagree we would say we disagree with the student because it is the same thing happening whether you multiply or divide by the reciprocal there and finally number five we have a quadrilateral side lengths of three four and five here's one here's three here's four and here's five and here's six is that accurate nope just making it up three four five six and that's quadrilateral a b is a scaled copy with a scale factor uh scale factor of two okay so scale factor of two so we're gonna be multiplying everything by two to get b so if i have three four five and six in a and i'm going to get to b i'm multiplying by a scaled factor of times two times two times two times two times two and end up with six eight ten and twelve which one's the following length? Five is not, six is, seven is not, eight is, nine is not. Okay, just putting the scale factor in, multiplying, and seeing what you get. Hope that helps you out your homework today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.